Hi. Hi. Testing, testing. We've received over 600 questions from teens all around the world anonymously. I'm here today to give you advice on all things. Let's go. Is it weird or bad that I don't shave my pubic hair? Is it weird or bad? No. No, do whatever you want. Pubic hair, like anything aesthetic, goes in and out of fashion. No, I mean it's purely down to personal preference. If this is TMI, I'm so sorry, but I am team like do whatever you want with your body hair. Gone are the days of me trying to go bald eagle. Pubic hair is hot. Like, own it. So in the 70s, the bush was in, then you had the landing strip come in, then in the 90s, people wanted no hair at all. If you like rocking the pubic hair, if you like being hairy, go for it. Live your best life. I find, um, like, I have a bit of pubic hair now, and people respond really well to that. Like, it's almost like they find it, like, unusual and erotic. If you want to shave it all off, and that makes you get your zhuzh, it gives you your life do that as well. No one has any right to say what you can or can't do with your pubic hair. It's up to your own personal comfort. Anal? I'm confused and worried. Does it even feel good? How can I be prepared to not make it awkward if I decide to try it? Okay, so anal is a personal preference. Some people love it, some people hate it. From my personal experience, I've done anal. And the thing about anal is, you gotta make sure that your hole is clean. And by that is you douche. My kind of essential rules for anal is to always use lube because your anus is not self-lubricating, um, whereas the vagina is, and to always use a condom. Like small tears can happen and um, STI transmission, like you, there's very high rates um, among penetrative anal. Basically the thing about douching is um, for you to clean your hole so that there's no, you know, leftover poops or like poops that are waiting up there and like, you know. You know. Does it feel good? Um, yeah, there's a lot of nerve endings in your anus actually. And you have two anal sphincter muscles. So you have an external one and an internal one, and the reason you have two is so you don't have a leak during the day. The thing about anal is you have to be really quite relaxed to enjoy it, and unfortunately it's one of those things that if you're nervous, your sphincter will tighten up, which isn't going to make it enjoyable. From my personal experience, is anal, does anal feel good? Maybe. I always tell my friends and people online to start slowly with a condom and lube and until you reach the second muscle and you'll feel like a tightening. And that's where you just have to wait a little bit, I would say, until the muscle relaxes and, and it will relax. You should really only do it if it's something that you really want to do. Don't get a don't have, like do it because a partner's pressuring you into pressuring you into it. Because if a partner is pressuring you into it, you're not going to be um, relaxed enough for it to feel good. I don't suggest trying anal doggy style for the first time. Um, for those people with vaginas, I say having vaginal sex first and then transitioning into anal is like a nice way to make sure you're really horny and turned on and into it. It's also important to build up by using toys and fingers rather than just being like, oh, let's go straight to like penis in asshole, like penetrative anal. I have an erectile dysfunction. What are some ways I can pleasure a girl in the bedroom to make up for it? There are so many ways to pleasure women uh, that don't involve your penis. It is so fine that you have erectile dysfunction. Every penis is different and responds differently and reacts differently. First step would be probably asking them. I think like it's really nice to be asked what feels good and what they enjoy. I really like giving oral and that can be like a really fun thing to be engaging in. Put your ego at the door, get yourself some dildos and some strap-ons and some sex toys and have some fun. My mum always tells me to wait for marriage to have sex and that only girls without a mom have sex before marriage but my biggest fear is that I'm going to get pregnant. What should I do? I'm sad to uh, hear that that is what your mum is saying. Um, it is certainly not true. I grew up in church and I made a decision to follow Christ when I was 13. I was raised Christian so we were told um, you don't have sex before marriage, otherwise you're a sinner. 
Firstly, I think your mum's giving you some good advice. Even though it's not popular advice, I still think it's good advice. Because what she's saying is, wait till you're in a safe, committed relationship with someone you love to have sex. I did, however, start having sex before marriage because I wanted to explore myself. I like wanted to be free. I'm not going to be told what I can and can't do based on you know, religion. I knew I was a good person and I didn't understand what morals had to do with it. In regards to your fear about not getting pregnant, there is a lot of options available to help that. The best thing to do is to educate yourself on um, how to have safe sex using a condom. You take the pill, Implanon. I do highly recommend that, that you always have condoms on you, no matter what. I think the only one that can actually 100% say so you're not going to get pregnant is if you 100% don't have sex. Right now, I think it's good that you're talking to your mum about this. Um, and I would continue to have that conversation. Make it an ongoing conversation with your mum. It's your life at the end of the day and you don't want to be, you know, 80, 90, um, whatever it is and just filled with regret that you didn't fully take control of your adolescence.